that. Am I not on? I think they're dealing with, there we go. Let me start off by saying that um, we live in a society that is a, way more fractured than it's ever been and typically makes the assumption that if you're arguing for something, then you're arguing against something else. That's not what I'm doing. What I'm trying to deal with today as we talk, talk through this is the need to adopt really the human side of security in addition to, I'm going to grab my water back, <clears throat> in addition to all the great technology that we have. Um, because what I typically end up hearing is we talk about things like security awareness and training and all that kind of stuff is, well, you're saying that we just need to shift all of our budget to that. Nobody's ever made that statement before. Nobody says drop your firewalls, drop your security mail gateway, drop your endpoint protection, and just fully embrace humanity as the solution for everything. Um, so let me get into this, though, by making a point about the fact that what we have been doing needs some augmentation. And so if you look at security over the past oh, couple decades, what you'll see is that there are organizations that are much larger, bigger, uh, financially sound, have lots of great smart people and resources, bigger than most of us will ever get, with more expertise than most of us will ever be able to afford, and yet they've still fallen victim to cybercrime. They've had data breaches. So if we were to think that if I could afford the next cool thing, if I could hire these kind of people, then I would be able to solve the data breach problem. I'd be able to solve all these security problems. We know that the best can't. There's still something fundamentally missing. We also know that budget is not the thing that is holding us back because what we've seen year after year after year is that people are spending more and more on cybersecurity related technology and programs, and yet data breaches are outpacing the spend. So there's something wrong with the equation, the way that we've been thinking about it. And I think you already know where I'm going with this, is that, that people have been one of the things that have primarily been neglected over time. Because what we see, it doesn't even matter really which reports you look at, is that humans are the primary attack vector that is being exploited over and over and over again and ultimately leading to that constant daily drip of data breaches that each of us see. And so we have to do something different. Clearly there's a piece of the equation that has been missed or neglected. And I think when we look at it by, by money, because what you value, you typically put some finances behind, we see that the human side of things has been receiving the least amount of attention. And in fact, when I actually look at this spend, I don't even see a representation of where we are technologically as a society. I almost see an old school, you know, really crispy perimeter type of mindset being represented in spin where you know you're spending so much on the network and then kind of going down to the endpoint but what we have to realize that is that every human is an endpoint and every human has control of several other endpoints out there and so we need to shift some of that whether that's money or whether that's money and time and attention um, or expertise, we need to have some conscious intentional shift over into this human side of things. And that's because what we've been doing is we've been, in, been spending a lot of great time, money, effort, and expertise around building great resilient technology that is still missing the primary attack vector. And so what happens is we've created things where firewalls are harder to get through, secure email gateways are, are harder to, to penetrate. And so we're constantly uh, upping the, the arms race game over there. And ultimately what the attacker does then is they say, well, I'm gonna um, not deal with all of this stuff because I don't wanna blow a zero day on that, or I don't wanna spend months, you know, weeks, months, or years to create the perfect technology-based attack. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to call Bob in the call center 
and I'm going to trick him into giving away something or sending me something, or I'm going to send an email that's crafted just well enough to pass all of the other filters, and that's going to land in somebody's inbox, and they're going to have to deal with that. So dealing with the human, hacking the human, is the thing that has the greatest ROI for cyber criminals right now because of the fact that we've gotten so great with technology-based defenses. And so what I really see in this is that security awareness is typically where people start thinking that you need to shift all of your time, money, effort, and expertise. But I don't think that security awareness, the way that we've traditionally practiced it, is enough. And I'll, I'll tell you the mindset that I want you to adopt. Because I think what, uh, again, I think, I think we typically... Um, based on our society, based on our upbringing, we typically think in really um, big, well-defined buckets of, all right, if I need awareness, then that means that I need to make people aware, which means that I need to give them information, which means that I need to give posters and newsletters and videos and all that. And all, all that's great. That's a piece of the answer, but it is not the answer in and of itself. Uh, awareness without any intention to follow through on that or the ability to retain that is fundamentally flawed. And so security awareness, I think that's the, the term that people Google, um, which is great, but it is a misleading term that we have to be able to add some, you know, add some additional context to. And so when I think about it, um, and I apologize for the graphic, this came out of, uh, out of my book and I didn't have time to adapt it for a slide. Um, but the way that I typically think about it is we've got basically four different levels, um, maybe five if you add doing nothing. One is compliance-based uh, addressing of this, which is I understand the rules, the mandates that say I need to do something, so I'm going to do just the bare minimum so I can check the box. That's limited benefit. Information sharing is then giving people information, the things that I believe that they need to, to know in order to combat the threats that are coming at them or in order to deal with the, the things that I need them to do, the ways that I need to behave. So it's very knowledge-based. And I think that that has limited benefit as well because we all know that our parents gave us lots of information, our schools give us lots of information, the news gives us lots of information, we read lots of cool things, but it tends to just kind of wash through us. It doesn't necessarily impact the way that we live. And I'll talk a little bit more in just a second about what even if we do care, um, how big is that impact? But if you want to have a more transformational result, something that changes behavior, then you need to focus on the behavior side of things. And there's ways to do that using psychology, uh, using traditional behavior science, and even using, yes, information, but in different ways. And then ultimately where you want to get to is understanding that people are not individual the way that we might think about it. We're, we're all affected greatly by everybody around us, the standards, the social pressures, and so on. And so I, I really believe that security awareness and security behavior are two different things. And we failed for a long time to deal with the knowledge intention behavior gap. So uh, just because I know something doesn't mean that I intend to act on that. And even when I intend to act on something, I may not follow through with that behavior. I mean, every year, millions of people, billions of people, I'm sure, make New Year's resolutions. They say, I want to eat better, I want to lose weight, I want to spend more time with my family, I want to go to the gym more. They do all of these things. They have got the knowledge, they know the benefit that it has, they have the intention to do it, they wrote it down, they tell people about it, and yet within a week, two, three weeks, a month, it all falls by the wayside. So knowledge and intention alone will never be enough either. There's still something missing. And so out of that knowledge, intention, behavior gap flow what I call three realities of security awareness. Number one, just because I'm aware doesn't mean that I care. Number two, if we try to work against human nature, we will fail. And number three is what our employees do is way more important than what they know. I'll, I'll say it as clearly as I can. Knowledge in and of itself has never stopped a breach. I can know all the right things and let a breach happen. Or I might even not know what I'm doing at all, but just naturally act in the right way and prevent a breach. 
And so the knowledge component, this thing that we've maximized, we even called an entire category of security uh, practice around that. This idea of awareness is fundamentally deficient for the way that we deal with this. Uh, the other thing that we do is we append the word cyber to everything, and we forget that a lot of the data breaches aren't related to the way that somebody interfaces with technology. It's the way that they interface with information or life in general. If I write a password on a whiteboard or IP on a, on a whiteboard and then walk out of a room, that data is exposed. And so we typically think about the bits and the bytes and the you know, cool command prompt stuff, and we, we talk about a lot about that, and we build imagery around that, and we're missing over half the story. And so we really need to realize that, that humans are a little bit weird. You know, we're, we're lazy. Uh, we're influenced by those around us. We're social. We're creatures of habit. We, we tend to like to do things the way that we all, always have. And uh, there have actually been great models built around how to shift behavior using a combination of motivation, making something feel easy enough to do, shifting the context of what, the way that people are thinking about it, uh, prompting in the right ways. And we don't have time to go into all of this, but the, the resources are out there for us. There are great models that help people build better habits, live better lives that we can take, we can apply. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. We bring that in and we adapt. And ultimately where the market can go is to not just the things that we've seen where we're trying to create information or we're trying to create phishing programs. That's where the market's kind of evolved, but the market needs to push back past that. Security programs need to push back just awareness and simple phishing or just awareness and phishing and metrics, but we need to realize that people are whole individuals and individuals are, are part of a larger ecosystem that is culture. And culture is something that gets to be very interesting to think about because it's not just the person, it's the way that the person interacts with those around them. It's the behaviors that are being modeled. The, the unconscious things that we train each other to do just by the things that we see patterned. It is the unwritten rules of the way that we see that environments work. The tone that people use when they talk about things, the word choice that they have, the educational background that they have, uh, all of this really influences and starts to make social groups act in different ways. So it's behavior, responsibilities, the way that people think about things, cognition, social norms that are there, the way that people view compliance with a whole bunch of, you know, whole range of different things, the way that we speak, communicate with each other, and then our attitudes around it. You know, when we think about how all of this relates together, there are several things that happen whenever we really want to codify somebody's approach to security. It's not just knowledge, it's knowledge and it's, it's beliefs, it's values, it's behaviors because that, you know, behaviors typically flow, flow out of knowledge, uh, values and beliefs. And then it's the context that somebody is or is in or a group is in. And then it's all the social pressures and social richness that happens around that. And that I think is, you know, an understanding of that and an application of how to shape that is ultimately where security programs need to go in the future. And with that, I'll just leave with uh, one last statement, is that the people are at the center of everything. If you think about all the technology that we have, all the civilization that we built, the transportation logistics systems that we have, the organizations that we work for, they all exist to serve one thing, and that is humans. Humans are at the center of everything. When something goes bad, it's not just the technology that feels the pain for that. Technology can't feel pain. Technology doesn't care. The things, the, you know, ultimately what feels the pain and what will be the resolution is through humans being put at the heart of the solution, paired with technology that can, as we said earlier today, become a force multiplier and then ultimately let that create a virtuous cycle. So for me, I really believe that the conclusion is to focus on humanity and let's see where we can evolve from a security perspective. And that's me. I really appreciate it and thank you so much.